Hello and welcome to another special Halloween edition of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Uh, we're drinking Wolf's Bane Bitter. You're gonna need a few of these before you go hunting the wolf, man. Today we're gonna be doing a special trash or treasure episode on 2002's Halloween Resurrection. <laughs> We've been going year by year doing trash or treasures on the Halloween movies. Last year we did H2O. Ugh. Tore that one in you asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this year, let's see if Halloween Resurrection does any better. Halloween Resurrection was directed by Halloween 2's director, Rick Rosenthal. He did a, I guess, such a piss poor job. John Carpenter was all mad and everything. <laughs> well, John Carpenter had no right to be <laughs> mad because he knew he wrote a shitty script. <laughs> and he got an ass load of money anyway, yeah. so. <laughs> he had money falling out of his asshole. This movie stars Busta Rhymes. And Tyra Banks. <laughs> yeah. So that will tell you right there the quality of this movie yeah. we're going to review. What kind of a tone that sets. <laughs> okay, so Halloween Resurrection takes place three years after the events of H2O. And uh, Laurie Strode is now catatonic. She's in a catatonic state and locked away at uh, Grace Anderson Sanitarium. You was in a sanitarium. And she got that way by cutting off who she thought was Michael Myers' head, and it ended up being somebody completely different. Michael pulled the switcheroo out on her, and, and then you all see him walking into the woods, and like <laughs> nobody notices, and that's it for three years? What the hell was he doing for three fucking years? <laughs> Maybe he kept a paramedic outfit and worked as a paramedic for a bit, I don't know. He's all fishing and like... <laughs> just hanging out at the woods, enjoying life and shopping. And he's all buying these fur coats and everything and like... He's so all rich. <laughs> so eventually, after three years, Myers makes his way to this sanitarium he breaks in and he dispatches of the guards right away. The one guard finds his friend without a head. Like, you don't see what happened. He's just his head is gone. And then he gets his throat slid from behind. And he makes his way to Lori's room and he sees the figure of somebody lying in the bed and he goes to chop at it. Lori gets out of the room and she lures Michael up to the rooftop of the sanitarium. Sanitarium and gets him into like this snare yeah, around his ankles and flips him upside down. But of course, she has to have one last look at her brother and go to pull his mask off and she's within arm's reach. What did she think was gonna happen? He grabs her, they have this huge fucking tumble over the side. He stabs her in the back, in the spine it looks yeah. like. And then she falls and she ends up dying. And she kisses him first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See you in hell, Michael. And Like, whatever. I get at this point, whatever. <laughs> we then get introduced to uh, Busta Rhymes and Tyra Banks' characters. They're interviewing these kids to make a live webcast of the inside of the Myers house. They want to sort of answer the reason why Michael's gone crazy. Yeah, it's like, okay, a couple of kids can do that in one night when all these detectives and Loomis himself yeah. can figure that out in 25 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they ain't gonna find it through a bunch of spices and shit. The time is fresh. <laughs> While the camera guy is setting up, Michael Myers interrupts him, grabs the camera with the tripod at the end, and like the tripod is all sharp. Super the sharp, <laughs> yeah. I've never seen a tripod like that. Not like that, it would tear the shit out of your carpet and everything. <laughs> <laughs> you go to slide it and the shit. <laughs> Super wrecks your floor. Stabbing the camera guy right through the throat and into the wall too. Which is a super ripoff of the kills and peeping Tom. All the kids converge at the Myers house and they're given webcams with all different feeds so people can watch each individual feed on this webcast. Sent into the house basically to go find out why Michael went bad. <laughs> and they're kind of looking around and of course the place is destroyed, it's all disheveled. So I don't know what they're supposed to find but the first clue is um, the spices in the <laughs> spice rack 
are too fresh. <laughs> <laughs> Michael's fancied himself as a gourmet cook. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he spent the three years doing. Michael's all got that chef hat on. <laughs> He's all sauteing. They kind of look through all the rooms and they start finding all those weird things. Like they pull out a high chair in the kitchen. It's got all these straps and chains on it to secure baby Michael. And... <laughs> They go into the basement and there's another room with all these chains and harnesses where they used to keep Myers locked up and yeah. they go into his bedroom there's all these weird things in there like little things he'd make that are all signs of a tortured child yeah, and all yeah. this stuff. Yeah. You should get their names but it doesn't matter. No it doesn't yeah. matter at all. They all kind of separate and this one kid's looking in the mirror. And then Michael Myers busts through the mirror and like <laughs> grabs him and stabs him right through the top of the head. Probably the best kill in the movie. Yeah, it's close. Which yeah. Doesn't say much. So two of the kids go down into the basement. Earlier, he's all macking on her. She wants nothing to do with him. Yeah. But now they're down in the basement. She starts making out with him. Kind of throws her camera on the ground and yeah, it all turns to show them. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> they start mm. making out. Then all these skeletons like break through the wall on top of them and they're like, ah, start freaking out. And then he's like, hey, hold on a minute. What's this? Made in Taiwan? <laughs> so it's obvious that all this stuff has been staged and placed there for them to find. In the meantime, Freddie and Nora are watching from the production van. Got their wine, they're celebrating. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a big success. Like, in the meantime, this kid, Miles, who has befriended one of the other kids in the Myers house, Sarah, is watching from a party. He's kind of snuck away from the party and gone on the laptop and yeah. starts watching. And he sees all this happening and he kind of sees Myers walking around. He's like, oh my God, they're in danger. And he starts like texting her, mm -hmm. warning her that Myers is out there. And then all these other kids from the party start piling into the study or yeah. whatever, wherever the <laughs> yeah. fuck he's in. And start watching too. The one, those one kids are all break in and they start making out. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> you pervert. He's like, like, what? <laughs> he was there first. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't trying to <laughs> cop a stare or anything. So Freddie dons the Myers costume and he's gonna scare the kids and he's walking around the Myers house and he runs into real Myers. Yeah who he thinks is the missing cameraman, and they have a confrontation, and we're gonna end the plot there. Because <laughs> if you haven't seen Halloween Resurrection, well, you're in for a little treat. Yeah. <laughs> That'll bring us to the treasure of this movie, the reality TV idea that they kind of take and run with in this. It was sort of a relatively new thing in the early 2000s. They even mentioned the Osbournes, yeah. which was like one of the first mainstream reality shows to hit the scene. Yeah, Survivor was coming out at the time. Mm -hmm. It had a couple of seasons in its back pocket by then. and Yeah. Yeah, it was relatively new, and I kind of like the commentary on reality TV, even this early in the reality TV game, where it's like, ah, oh, it's all staged, you know, yeah. like Buster Rhymes' character is staging all this stuff. Nothing is really real. Nobody wants to see this shit. This yeah. stuff isn't real. Yeah, yeah. No, people don't watch reality TV to see reality. Yeah. And that's pretty in your face here. At the time, it was newer commentary. Mm -hmm. They shoot the movie with each kid having their own webcam. You see all their different points of views and you see it through the shitty kind of fuzzy yeah. webcam too which is a little bit different adds a little bit more dynamic to yeah. the you know not necessarily to the characters but to the development yeah. of what's going on to the style of the movie it <laughs> yeah. makes the movie a little bit more stylistic just because the way they use the webcams they actually come sort of full circle all the way back to the Myers house finally like a decent Myers house not like in Halloween 5 where it's some mansion, some castle. Yeah, it's like, like how did that manage to fit in between all these homes, you know? And surprisingly, this movie is actually paced pretty good. Really get to the point, like there's the opening scene with Lori. Introduce all the kids very briefly, and <laughs> yeah. then they're in the Myers house right away. There's yeah. no fluff, no bullshit. Even though some fluff and bullshit would have helped build the characters more, at least they get to the point. 
As I, shitty as the point is. Yeah, I was never really <laughs> bored with this movie. And a lot of the entertainment comes from Buster Rhymes. <laughs> yeah. He is the real golden nugget in this movie. He's the real treasure. He's like one of the only reasons to watch the movie. Without him, you don't have Halloween Resurrection. No. Without him, this movie would be close to unwatchable, actually. His scenes are so good, and actually a lot of them were ad-libbed and rewritten by him. There's that scene we left our plot off at where he confronts real Myers, not knowing it's real Myers, <laughs> and just fucking tears him a new asshole, starts <laughs> cussing him out, and what are you doing here? I'm supposed to be playing Myers! <laughs> Get your ass back to Dodge! What are you doing dressed like that for? You think you're Myers? I'm Myers! <laughs> <laughs> that mess when he's talking, yeah. the mouth is all moving. <laughs> it's all moving. <laughs> and he looks hilarious in the mask. And he's got some great one-liners in here. Busting at the end to save Sarah. Yeah. Trick or treat, motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> you what? He's doing all that karate and oh. everything, and he's all good. <laughs> yeah, the Buster Rhymes karate. Like a lot of people, like talk about it as being a bad part of the movie, but it's it's the best part of yeah. the movie because it's entertaining at least. Yeah, yeah. And he's all kicking the shit out of Myers, and you kind of see Myers hesitate a little bit, walking. <laughs> yeah. He does that big kick, wow, that big roundhouse. <laughs> yeah, it kicks him like super far. Then he's got the good line at the end, too. Looking crispy there, Mikey. Like some chicken fried motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> chicken fried? Like, if that was the last line of the movie, I would have been happy. <laughs> yeah, it's like... <laughs> chicken fried motherfucker. <laughs> and another piece of treasure in this, and we're kind of on the fence, is the opening scene with Laurie, where Michael finally kills Laurie Strode, like... In one way, it's neat because it's a neat end of the chapter. Yeah, it like closes off Halloween yeah. entirely. Finally. And a lot of people think that the switch with Michael and the paramedic was done specifically to bring him back in this movie. But no, they actually secretly shot that when they did H2O. Right. To have an out, to have an, a, a way into a new sequel. So it was all planned out. Jamie Lee Curtis did agree to come back one last time for only a 30 second cameo, which of course turned into a big <laughs> ordeal in the beginning of this movie, but it's kind of good of, as its own little short movie, mm -hmm. but it's so disconnected from the rest of the movie. It has nothing to do with anything else in the movie. Yeah, and it's done so piss poor too, like the story side of it. It's like, come on, like, Lori's smarter than that too. I'd rather to fall for like trying to take his mask off yeah. and get grabbed by him and it was so throwaway. It's almost an insult to her character. It's treasure in the way that it's kind of the best part of the movie, but it's trash that's completely throwaway. Yeah, this movie almost could have been done without it. But without it, there's not much there either. <laughs> exactly. You know? So it's one of those weird, th it's, 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 it's a weird, it's a paradox. It is a paradox. This scene in this movie is a paradox. Which brings us to the trash of this movie. <laughs> That's right. And I bet you guys are all surprised how long the treasure part actually was. <laughs> the movie as a whole is generally pointless. Yeah. It really is pointless and it feels pointless as a Halloween movie. And basically as kind of a standalone movie too, really. Yeah, because this movie, what, the screenplay, the original idea for this movie was not for a Halloween movie. Yeah, well, one of those, right? The kids going in the house, investigating the house of an ex-murderer with the webcast. That was for a different film. And while well, Miramax had it kicking around and like, let's throw Myers in there and that's our new Halloween movie. Yeah. And it shows big time with that big beginning and then Lori gets killed so now his his mission is over well he goes home and finds kids hanging out in his house and that's <laughs> yes. the new movie you know <laughs> yeah, no, like, it's so stupid speaking of the kids that's another piece of fucking rotten trash in this movie is the characters besides Buster Rhymes character as Freddy are all just so wooden and yeah. throwaway and cliche there's no backstory to any of these kids, you don't know actually who any of them really are. Yeah, besides the fact that they're just generic 
what, high school or college yeah. kids or whatever? Like, you, okay, that's it? You don't care about any of them? You got your typical blonde who just wants to be in front of the camera. Yeah. You got the kid who's a blatant ripoff from Hyde in that 70s show. Mm -hmm. You know, you have the typical final girl goody two shoes oh, i don't really want to do this this isn't right yeah, you know? yeah. and she ends up being the strong yeah. one at the end cookie cutter garbage <laughs> yeah and you need to care about the characters i mean other than that what the hell's the point yeah. if they get killed you're like eh, whatever on to the next one yeah. and the characters motives are so stupid too like <laughs> you know the couple that are all making out and gonna have sex in the basement like <laughs> on a live webcast? That's what you want to be doing and yeah. be known for? It's pretty stupid. It's stupid, you know, like, the guy all defends himself against Michael Myers by throwing the, the spices, the <laughs> thyme in his face? And it works, <laughs> too? He all gets thrown back? Like, like, you couldn't use something better, like some cayenne pepper? <laughs> you fucking, like, thyme or whatever it was? <laughs> it's time, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> He's all, <laughs> Y'all gets, gets thrown back all like, iconic. Like, who would have thought you would get to stoop to this low where you're watching a Halloween movie and Myers is getting fucking spices thrown in his face? Get spiced? <laughs> At least some shitty horror movies, there's some good kills to kind of get you through it. Mm -hmm. In this, they're all lame, like the tripod thing well that's stolen from peeping tom knife through the top of the head it's okay <laughs> just because it's kind of funny but it's a glimpse like make yeah. it that a little longer <laughs> you know yeah and then they get a little cliche harking back to the original movies there's no originality to anything stabbing the kid <clears throat> through the wall bring you know yeah. Lifts him up, stabs him through the wall. Except for this time, he uses more than one knife. Yeah. So, so it's different now. Ooh, yeah. A lot more dynamic. No, it's just all a bunch of boring garbage. Like, at least they could have made that fun. I wanted to see some fight scenes with yeah. Michael rather than Michael just kind of steamrolling everybody. Yeah. And apparently the movie was supposed to have a bit more of that comedic tone. <clears throat> there were a lot of scenes that were not shot but written where it does feel more like a later Friday the 13th movie like Jason Lives, Jason Takes Manhattan, that more comic-y, cartoon right. feel. Michael was supposed to steal like a, a nice red Firebird <laughs> car and be driving around in that and like get out of the car and beep beep and locks it. <laughs> like, as stupid as it is, at least it would have been funny, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. A at little more it, entertaining. At least it would have been something <laughs> different, you know? Yeah. There's no true horror aspects set up in this movie at all. No. It's just so generic that you don't feel anything. <laughs> you, you don't... <laughs> no. There's no suspense. There's no thrills in this. You don't get your heart racing to any degree because you don't care about anything or no. anybody. <laughs> Yeah, it's just kind of like you're just sitting there waiting for Buster Rhymes to, to say the next funny thing. Yeah, and that's it. That's about it. Yeah. You know, it's so pointless. <laughs> you know, the, the music is generic and shitty. It's just like everything about this is generic and shitty. The movie <laughs> looks kind of cheap. Obviously, a Mirror Max cash grab, you know? Yeah, Let's just, squeeze as much out of this as we can, you know. And just slap the Halloween name on it, right? And it was the final nail in the coffin, right? There wasn't, you know, another real legit Halloween movie until the Rob Zombie remakes. Right. That was another nail in the coffin. The less said about those, the better. And then we get to the 2018 trilogy, and that's yeah. its own thing. Yeah. Now. The fact they had to shove Michael into a script that was never meant to be a Halloween movie tells you that there's nothing left to do with this. Yeah, yeah. What are you going to do with that? <laughs> <laughs> with the death of Donald Pleasance, too, you can f still feel that hole. Yeah. You know? H2O is there's a huge, you know, enormous gaping hole there yeah. that Loomis needed to fill, and he wasn't there. And the funny thing is, part of the original screenplay was a Loomis-type character who was a <laughs> yeah. detective who was supposed to be investigating the death of Laurie Strode at the sanitarium. Sanitarium. Follows Myers back to Haddonfield, but they felt, well, that's too much of a, a Loomis ripoff. We'll get rid of him. Well, 
<laughs> Michael kind of needs that, though. Yeah, it's, he needs an adversary that, yeah. that feels like an adversary. You don't get that in this. Like, Buster Rhymes doing his karate isn't enough of an adversary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not enough to truly stop him, as, like Loomis can do. As know? funny as it is, it's not believable that this is going to end Myers, you know? <laughs> yeah. Needless to say, Halloween Resurrection is most people's least favorite <laughs> Halloween movie. Mm -hmm. So, for us, is it trash or treasure? Kind of have to look at it from two different points of view. Is it a is it a good Halloween movie? No, it's complete trash. <laughs> is it a good movie on its own? No, not even no. that much. <laughs> you know, it's it's a lot a lot more enjoyable than H two O. But it's still not that great of a movie standalone, so I, I think it's ah, trash. I gotta say trash. I didn't even want to rewatch this for this Neither review. Neither did I. I was like, oh man, but we gotta do it. Yeah. We gotta do it. People were looking forward to us shitting all over <laughs> Resurrection. And the funny thing is that I don't think we did shit on it as much as people expected us yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. We really took a major dump on H2O last year. It but, deserves it, though. But H2O had all the right to be a really good movie, and it just it coughed out. Yeah, they shit the bed, and they, they fucking rolled in it multiple times. This movie had no right to be good in the first place. Yeah, and it's at least <laughs> somewhat enjoyable. <laughs> yeah. It's paced decent to where you're not really all that bored. Doesn't mean the movie's fantastic. It was dead on arrival. You know, mm -hmm. it was, this movie was fucking DOA, and at least Busta Rhymes was able to give it a little bit of entertainment yeah. value, yeah. you know? It started at the bottom and could only go up. Yeah. Whereas H2O started at the, at the top. With all the hype in the world. Yeah, and it, it just took a nosedive. Is it better than H2O? I think it is. I, I think... <laughs> I just, you know what, I had a chance to even buy H2O in the thrift store the other day and I passed it up. But I have this on VHS. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> I don't know, I think they're both equally bad, but maybe I might get a bit more entertainment value out of Resurrection. Yeah, like, H2O is just boring and it's so lame. This is boring and lame too, but... At least we got chicken fried, motherfucker. <laughs> Trick or treat, motherfucker. Yeah. We got all the motherfuckers. <laughs> They're all covered, yeah. <laughs> and stay tuned next week for our next Halloween special. And until then, keep drinking. <laughs>